Hey, we're with uh, Neil Moore, who's, uh, well, you've probably been following him on his uh, trips from the Pacific to here, and you may have followed him two summers ago. So I'm going to let kind of Neil take over here. And uh, if you guys got any questions, type them in and we'll uh, ask Neil and we'll go from there. So Neil, tell us about yourself and your trip. Cool. So um, I'm, uh, I'm taking my canoe from, uh, from coast to coast uh, from the Pacific Ocean. Um, over the divide, it just came over the last couple days, over the continental divide, uh, here to the eastern side, to Helena, Montana. Then I'll take uh, the rivers, uh, uh, the Missouri and the Mississippi down to the Gulf, and then uh, skirt the Gulf 150 miles to Mobile, and then take the rivers north, up to the Great Lakes, um, to Buffalo. And the big idea is to try to get to Buffalo before the snow flies on the third winter. Then uh, the Erie Canal, the Mohawk, into the Hudson, and down to New York City. Um, it'll be a two-year a two-year adventure. Um, I'm stopping along the way. So, like for example, here in Helena, I'm here for about four or five days. I'm stopping along the way and meeting meeting up with folks and um, trying to uh, trying to chronicle stories uh, along my along my sojourn as well. So it's a it's sort of a blend between adventure and storytelling as well. How did you uh, come up with the idea for this trip? Uh, well. I, Eleven years ago, I paddled the Mississippi River um, in 2009. It was the height of what we call today the Great Recession, and um, times were tough. And my thinking at that time was, I was overseas. I was in Africa and uh, East Asia, and my thinking was, um, I had an epiphany. What if, what if I came back to my home country, and uh, and placed a canoe, um, launched a canoe from the source of the Mississippi River, and came right on down. Um, uh, the Mississippi River, sort of historically, the, these are rough and tumble towns. They've been rough and tumble since the, since cotton went bust. Uh, Mark Twain talked about uh, these towns as well, of course. And um, so my thinking was to 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 come down the very center of America and try to chronicle um, the the American experience and what what adv what practical advice the, these towns and people and communities would would have for the world as well. Um, so, on that trip. High up on that trip, actually at the, the Brainerd Portage. There's ten portages before you get to uh, the first lock and down, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, one of those portages, I met uh, uh, a gentleman uh, from Bozeman, Montana, Dick Conant, who uh, who who was not just doing the Mississippi, but he was connecting rivers. And so, in my life, the Mississippi was huge. I mean, it's a it's an incredible river. It's a storied river. And, um, and to come down, it was just a huge life experience for me. But he was coming down, then, then he was gonna connect rivers all the way to Norfolk, Virginia. And I, I asked him, it just, I was dumbfounded, you can, you can do that? And, uh, and so I started thinking about it, and uh, years and years later, I thought, what if I was to actually go from coast to coast? From, uh, uh, initially, my thinking was from the East Coast to the West Coast. Then I had a conversation a few years ago with you, Norm, do you remember that? I and, do. And asked you about your experience coming up the, uh, the Missouri River. And you said, um, above and beyond the, the physical challenge, it was, it was psychologically challenging because you could walk faster. Um, and so, uh, so I started thinking about that, then I thought, wait a second, what if I go from, from the, the West Coast to the East Coast, so sort of coming backwards across the state and states. And uh, to finish off, um, the, the game plan to finish off is New York City and the Statue of Liberty. You're not allowed to land at the Statue of Liberty, but I am told you can paddle around, and the very end point is going to be um, is going to be Liberty State Park in New Jersey, with the backdrop of Lady Liberty and Manhattan. Awesome. How about if we uh, pull the big map out now and uh, just go ahead and trace your route uh, with your fingers there, and we'll get everybody an idea where you started. Yeah. Let's see here. So this is the United States. Um, started here at the Pacific from uh, from Astoria, Oregon, uh, here, the mouth of the Columbia River, and came up the Columbia River uh, to Tri-Cities, to Pasco, then came up the Snake River, uh, just across the border here into, uh, into Idaho, to uh, Lewiston. Then I hiked, I hiked 100 miles up to St. Mary's, to the base of... Uh, Lake Coeur d'Alene, out of Lake Coeur d'Alene, portaged, portaged up to, uh, to the top of, to the top of uh, Lake Ponderay to Sandpoint, then paddled from Sandpoint uh, into the Clark Fork, the mouth of the Clark Fork, 
and came up the Clark Fork into Missoula and beyond as far as I could. Um, to Garrison, I got off of Garrison, which is the start of 12 East, then came over, came over the divide on 12 East. 12 East, it's a, it's a scenic byway, um, which uh, goes over the Continental Divide. Then into Helena, let's see where we are here. Um, let's see, to Helena here, yeah, so, so we're in Helena now. Then from here, I'm gonna get on the Missouri and come up, up the Missouri and uh, through the breaks and then down, there's a bunch of dammed, dammed up lakes all the way uh, to Sioux City. Then at Sioux City, Iowa, it's a river wild, which will take me uh, uh, down through, uh, through Kansas City and then to St. Louis. At St. Louis, um, the game plan is to come down the Mississippi, but if I have time, if I'm ahead of schedule, I'd like to come up the Mississippi, just 116 miles to Hannibal. I've got some good friends right there in Hannibal, Missouri which is Mark Twain's hometown, uh, Samuel Clemens. Then come down the Mississippi, slowly but surely making my way to New Orleans by December this year. Um, the idea is to be in the Gulf for the, for the second winter. Then from, let's see here, from, uh, from New Orleans, I'll skirt the Gulf 150 miles to Mobile and come up the Mobile, come up the Tom Bigby, which has locks and dams. Um, so it, it, it'll, it'll slow the current there. Um, and the Tom, Tom Bigby, uh, I'll hit the Tom 10. And then up to, up to the Tennessee River. And from the Tennessee, I'll take the Tennessee up. Again, there's locks and dams, or, or dams at least, to, to block the current. I'll come up the Tennessee to Chattanooga, up to Knoxville. Then I'll come back a little bit and then come up the New River. And the new river will be with the current. Um, and I've got to be careful because I'm told that there's, a, there, there's some rapids along there. This straddles Tennessee and Kentucky. You're going through Daniel Boone uh, National, uh, National Park here. Um, once I'm in the Kentucky, uh, into Kentucky, then I'll hit the Dix River, which is a world-class fly fishing river. Somewhere along here, which jumps into the Kentucky. The Kentucky will take me uh, through Frankfurt, through the capital and we'll dump out into the Ohio just shy, just below Cincinnati. From Cincinnati, I'll come up the Ohio River to Pittsburgh, which is where the Ohio starts. And from Pittsburgh, I'll get on the Allegheny. It'll be, it'll be fall, possibly late fall next year. So hopefully the flow shouldn't be too bad on the Allegheny. I'll be, I'll be against current. And I'll come up, um, let's see, up the Allegheny up to, uh, to Lake Chautauqua here, upstate New York. From Lake Chautauqua, I take Portage Road, Old Portage Road, up to uh, Lake Erie. I skirt Lake Erie to Buffalo. Just above Buffalo is where the Erie Canal dumps in. I come along the Erie Canal, turns into the Mohawk, and will dump me into the Hudson right around Troy, Albany, um, in upstate New York. Here's Troy here. So then from here, um, the, whole, the whole trick is I've got to get through the third winter before I'm shut down by the weather. I'm told uh, the snow can fly hard and fast around Buffalo, around this region. If I can get through here, once I'm on the Hudson, I'm golden. Then I'll take my time. Um, it's a storied river, the Hudson, a beautiful river. I'll stop, I want to stop at Woodstock, just off the river, possibly West Point. I'd like to do a story at Sing Sing and then uh, eventually make my way down to New York City. And, and I'm, I'm looking to be there by New Year's 2022, so the very end of next year. Um, really quickly, two river terms that you'll be familiar with. One, and both very negative, um, but histori uh, historic as well for our country. One is to be sold down the river, is a huge negative. Um, we see that, of course, uh, in the writings of Samuel Clemens, of Mark Twain, uh, to, to to be sold down the river for, uh, for slavery in the country is a big negative. And then the other one is to be sent up the river. And to be sent up the river means Sing Sing uh, from New York City. So um, part of the storytelling that, that, that I'm, I'm hoping to do uh, deals with that part of the history as well. So in a nutshell, yeah, that's the country and that's the, that's the grand adventure. That's a pretty impressive route. Um, do, you, do you know if that route has been done by anyone before or similar? Um, 
As far as I can tell, no. Uh, there were those two, the, those two young men back in the 70s um, that you turned me on to, Norm, um, who, who both went, went missing and, and perished, actually, in the, you know, on the Columbia River back in the 70s. And looking at their map, it was somewhat similar. Um, but I think they were looking at 5,100 miles, and they were headed to uh, the end game was, um, was Maine for them. So yeah. as, far as, uh, as far as I know, and we talked about this as well, um, Norm, is going from west coast to east coast. So it, it, it's, very, it's very specific, but solo in a canoe, uh, continuous, this, this might be the first journey. But I, I, I'm not doing it to be the first. I'm just so, so excited uh, about the route. I'm excited about the people I'm gonna meet. There's whole sections of this country that I've never been to before. Right. Just over the moon uh, uh, to, to see and experience it sort of uh, up close and personal. What day did you start? I started about 99 days ago. I started on February 9th um, from, a, from, a, from the mouth of the Columbia, the story there. Of sure. So that was back in what, February? Yeah, early February. And tell them a little bit about the, your portage the last couple days. It, uh, it, it made the uh, newspaper, front page newspaper in Helena, Montana today. Um, you don't get a lot of articles in Helena on paddlers or paddling expeditions, so it was pretty cool that you got some coverage. So wh what have you been doing the last three or four days or five days for that matter? Coming over the divide. Um, so a couple, a couple must stops on this route. Um, I, I, I chose, uh, I chose uh, Highway 12 East uh, because it's a, it's a scenic byway that the motorcycle blogs rave about it because of, it's just, it's scenic. Uh, there's not a lot of semi trucks, which is good um, when you're playing a, a <laughs> A canoe, and the, the towns are sort of these little uh, uh, small towns are spaced out, just just perfect for hiking. So there's Avon, which is day one, and Avon has the Avon Cafe, which is just great. And uh, I have friends there, uh, right next to the Avon Cafe, which is just wonderful. So I'm able to spend some time uh, with them, socially distance and camping camping outside. And then uh, and then from there, it's a day's march to Elliston, and Elliston uh, is right before you. You have the 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 the, um, the huge ascent, and so Elliston also has a historic a historic saloon, the Spotted Dog Saloon, which is just great. So, Elliston represented um, the end of leg one of of, of first uh, of three legs uh, for the whole adventure. So to, to celebrate there was just great. I camped out behind actually the Elliston General Store this time around. It was the bar last time, and then and then you prepare for for that ascent. Um, I had chosen the two days, so it's one day for me, it's one, it was one day to the top of the divide, to McDonald Pass, 6,300 feet, and then um, down uh, to, to Helena. So I, I chose those days because we had some bad weather, we had some snow, and we had a lot of wind before those two days, and they're, they're slated for, for wind afterwards. So day one coming up was going to be rough no matter <laughs> <laughs> no matter what kind of day it looked like. If it's too hot, it'd be rough. If it's, if it's raining, if it was overcast, that'd be great. It was forecast for rain to start with, and the morning of, when I took off from Elliston, um, it was forecast just one hour of, 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 of possible snow, like 20% chance of snow. And the snow just came down, and it didn't stop. It didn't stop until, until lights out, until 10 o'clock at night. At the top of the divide, uh, we had at least six inches of snow, in some places a foot of snow, and it just didn't stop. 